Hi, and welcome to the first ever installment of Frank and Mary in Northboro. Um, many of you have seen the show that I have done earlier, which was called Bergeron Briefs. My name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. I do nothing but elder law, and many of you have met my friends Frank and Mary uh, and their kids Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., and you've always heard me tell the story about how their goal is very simple. They want to live in their house till they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. And so the question is, if that house is in Northboro, who do they need to know and what programs do they need to know about in order to really be happy seniors here in Northboro? So we decided to really f have this show, turn it into a monthly show, and focus on those issues, on those people. I've got two co-hosts for my, this show, Tammy Pozzaricki, a Northboro resident whose day job is, she, works, she runs Pleasant Trees, which is a, an adult day program in, in uh, Marlboro. And Kelly Burke, the, the senior center director, who could not make it here today, but they're going. The two of them and I are going to be the kind of co-hosting and figuring it out, and inviting guests. And our guest today is a woman that some of you may know, but I bet a lot don't. Her name is Anita Hagspiel, H-A-G-S-P-I-E-L. We're going to put that right into the credits here someplace, so we know how to spell it. <laughs> who is the? Are you the president or the chairman of the board? I'm the president. The president of the Friends of the Northboro Senior Center. Yes. And Kelly Burke said, this is the first person you should have on because that <laughs> organization drives so much of what gets to happen around seniors in Northboro. So I wanted to talk to you about this. I know you came prepared with an ad, which we're gonna get into a little later on. But first of all, can you just tell us about you? So you've, you're a, you were born and raised here? Did you just kind of show up here? <laughs> we're sitting here at Algonquin School, did the kids go? Tell us about you sure. and how you ended up at the Friends of the Northboro Senior Center. So I grew up in Weston, Massachusetts, yeah. and graduated from that high school. Yeah. And through the years and the various careers, yeah. I uh, was in Southboro. Yeah. I started in Westboro, was in Southboro, and then yeah. ended up finally in Northboro. Which was very so you much, worked your way up over yes, time from Weston correct. to Northboro, that's right? Correct. And you finally Northboro made it. Northboro was very much like yeah. Weston was when I was growing up in yes, the 50s yes. and 60s. It was great. Oh, that's really interesting. And we've been in Northboro for 33 years. And I have one daughter that went to Algonquin. Yeah. And she graduated in 1993. And she's not living around here now. No, she's, she's, she's out in the West Coast she's, in California. She's, she's migrated out. <laughs> yes, and, she is. And does. we were talking about the fact that prior to, to your real full time job that you now have, you actually had a another day job working at National Grid. That's right? correct. Working close by, and talk to us just about a little bit about that, what you, what you were well, doing there. For 10 years out of the 22, I was very fortunate to be one mile from the Northboro office. In fact, in one two-foot snowstorm, I yeah. cross-country skied to work and was the oh. only one there for several hours. That's great. So that That's was great. kind of fun. That's great. But we love the location where we are, and I, I worked in energy efficiency, Yeah. and one of the sidelines that I had my kind of extracurricular activity was I did the United Way. I was a fundraising employee yeah. that would help bring in um, dollars for the various things that National Grid supported. And, and the United Way was a big effort. The Veterans Day, we had a lot of cancer uh, drives for various types of cancer. Yeah. And so I always led that for the Northboro office. And it was just something that I guess the friends, the people that were on the board at that time, that's had what they heard were about, looking for, right? And they said, "Hello, Anita. <laughs> Would you be interested?" When I retired in 2011, and of course I said, "Of course." <laughs> so they actually so. scouted you. Yeah, oh, yes. right? I, I got scouted right, out. Right. I got scouted all that out. fundraising. Right. And I had known some of the people that were on the board, yep. so I think that's how it, you know, it kind of trickled over. How you say? And by the way, Tammy, you've been here now for quite a while too. Yes, you, since you've... 1992, and my kids went to yeah, Algonquin as yeah, well. Yeah, that's a long time. So. We're sitting here at Algonquin, right? And, and, and Anita was literally saying, I've been there a thousand times. How did I not know how to get to the cable station, right? So you started at the, at the Friends of the Northwest Senior Center, and we were, we were just talking a little bit of, you know, before we started about the, the, some aspects of the Friends group that you really feel make that the Friends group unique. You know? sure. And from your describing it, I know, I know a lot of Friends groups and a lot of communities, and it certainly sounds unique. Can you just kind of talk about that a little bit, and talk Certainly. about the, the Friends? I think what's important for people to know is that we have a very unique situation here in Northboro with our director of the Senior Center, Kelly Burke. And so we have, if you think of three rings, it's the Senior Center and the employees, 
It's the Council on Aging, and it's the Friends. The Senior Center, of course, is all the things that they do at the Senior it's Center, the senior programs center. and services. Right. Um, you know, we have an outreach person, Jocelyn. Then we have the Council on Aging folks that are really appointed by the select people here in town, and they provide knowledge and wisdom for um, programs and also services. Mm -hmm. The Friends are the fundraisers, and we are the nonprofit. And so we do things to help the Senior Center provide yeah. money to help all of the, I mean, we've provided assistance for people that can't afford an ambulance ride, or we, we provided a piano bench or the new shades, or different things like that. And um, I really feel strongly and really to my heart that these are the things that really help our seniors here in the town of Northboro. And so, there, so, there, so the selectmen don't appoint the members of the, of the board of the Friends of the North no. Coast Senior Center. the seniors Center. elect yeah. the Friends. That's correct. Correct. Actually, you can become a friend of the North Coast Senior Center. Yeah. If you're a town person, it's $5 yeah. a year. And that $5 really is a donation. Kelly likes to think of it as like the PTA or the PTO. Right. So it's really, um, you're, you can go to the Senior Center and you don't have to be a friend. But if you are a friend, you're doing a donation, and we open our arms to people to help us volunteer at the Senior Center. An example is two of our yeah, friends gonna, yeah. um, do the birthday lunches. They assist the friends, the, the board, the birthday, the birthday lunch. lunch every month. Um, the people can come in. Yeah. They've um, signed up for the birthday lunch, and they get a free sandwich yeah. and a drink. And yeah. we provide a birthday cake and sing happy birthday. That's and it great. happens every single month, and a lot of people, we get a lot of people in the bistro for that. It's wonderful. Right. That's and fantastic. And it really, um, it helps a lot of the seniors that, you know, maybe don't go out a lot, yeah. and they come in, however they get there, and we provide, you know, that transportation at the senior center, and they come in and they have a great, great lunch. And, and so, in, in tr how many, to give me a sense of that, of the, friend, of the people in the, in the Friends, how many of those people are also volunteers at the senior center? Well, so we have probably about close to 400 Friends members. Friends. And out of that 400, we also open it up to other towns. So there's probably about 145 of that 400 that come into the Senior Center from other towns. And they Who pay, not only come to the Senior Center, but they also have become Friends members here. That's right. And they're $10 yeah. a year. Yeah. And so they, they can come anyway to use the Senior Center, but this is their donation. Right. And so it really works out well, and then they get, of course, all of the opportunities with the programs. So right. it works out super. And so out of the people in your question of asking how many volunteer... If you were guessing, if you were guessing. Wow. It's I just would that say I see 20 so many... to 25. Yes. We have some people that are friends that, and I assist with this because I'm a gardener, we have some friends that plant the tubs in the summer, in the spring, and the beautiful tubs out on our patio. And there's now an urn like they have at the Marlboro. Right senior center and um, it's beautiful because it's yeah. a welcoming thing for people to see we have a brick area there so people have donated bricks for that and those in my mind are people that are volunteering to help out and do things and they can put somebody's name in remembrance or just in honor of yeah. and, and it really comes very special to, to the heart for that it really does that's pretty terrific it really is so I would say 25 to 30 people yeah. other than the board yeah. Um, are doing various things. And it really helps out. And um, Henry, our vice president, Henry Scolante, is there every single day. He Henry has, Scolante. He, Henry Scolante. Scolante. Yeah. And there's a Dolman's group there that now have probably about 45 people. And a it's what group? A Dolman's group. It's a national organization. And a lot of the senior centers sponsor this. It's a group of people that come in, men, and they talk about various things. And the fire chief has been there, the police chief. So these guys are coming in now, and they'll make donations to the friends, and they do. They had a, a, a barbecue, I guess, this week. So it's a fun thing to get people together and have some sort of a function. I see. I see. And is, is that a, is that totally a men's group? Yes. Like within the senior center. Yes. Well, that's really interesting. It's fun. That's it's a lot of fun, and, and a lot of the guys that have retired. You know, they like talking about the various subjects, although no politics or religion in that. No politics? <laughs> no. How no. do you do that? But they really oh have a lot God. of interest in the town things, so right. it, it works out great. Right, so it's kind of like this little magic place. Now, w w did, when was the Senior Center, I shouldn't say, when was yeah, the, the Senior Center? Yeah, the new one, right? Because you've got a new one. So were you, in, were you 
was the senior center already, the new one already built when you started your involvement? No, it had been there, I, so I think it was 2010, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. So um, it's going into the seventh or eighth year. Yeah. And um, I actually at National Grid did energy efficiency and assisted the account manager from National Grid to help yeah. provide the energy efficiency work for the senior and, center. And by the way, tell us about, what's, about the, the energy efficiency at the Well, there is a geothermal center. heat pump there. Which I was amazed by. You know, they by. have a lot of um, energy efficient lighting. Yeah. Um, I, there's a lot of passive solar there. If you ever go there in the winter, it heats up that room. It's wonderful. So we did a lot of things to help with HVAC, motors, all of yeah. that type of thing in the development. And, and so can you talk a, a little bit about kind of fast forwarding to now, the programs at the senior, and you, and you talked about the fact that, that you, you can actually do a lot of small things, you know, just literally sure. helping somebody get to the senior center and doing some small things. But some of the larger things that you have done over the last several years. Certainly. And then, and then looking forward, what are you thinking? You know, what are you thinking? Yeah, what we'll, are the goals of the yeah, friends for and, this yeah. coming year, maybe? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and into the future, because you mm -hmm. say, you t once again, you, you and Kelly are literally joined at the hip. You're yes. there like a <laughs> yes. lot, And right? um, the folks on the Council on Aging, I right. think it, it we really um, blend well and we work together to support in a very congenial way. I, I think it's fabulous, it really is. So um, one of the things the Friends did that was really successful when they first opened the senior center, Kelly was working in the b bistro area. Um, Jocelyn was, in fact, they still will lend a hand right. at some time. Right. But they eventually were going to hire someone who is Vicki Colleen, a fabulous chef and wonderful person. And what, what happened was the friends ended up giving the, the dollars for her to pay her um, for her part-time work there. Like literally 100% of the dollars, yes. right? That's right. So that bistro so would we, not, we would not have op opened, right? Well, it, it opened, it, but it wouldn't have been serving as scale, much right. in the scale, right? And so that worked out really well. And so what's happened now over the years, um, it's been unbelievable because it keeps growing and growing. We're serving more lunches, more bistro night on Tuesday night. And have you ever actually eaten there? I still haven't. So you need to because yes. the food is fabulous. It is. And I've gone yes. there for lunch. I've taken my guests there for and the, lunch. But I'm not a and friend. Can I, can I you go? Can still you go. Can, still can I go? Still go. Yes. Can still go. In fact, there, there and the are various people, even from National Grove, so take a walk on their lunch hour and they'll stop in. Because they're right so, down the street. Yeah. That's right. So it, that's, that's right. great. It's that's really fabulous good. that they're coming down the street for that. That's right. And it's pleasant. It's really pleasant there. And they have a lot of volunteers from various, even National Grid mm -hmm. folks, various right. organizations, churches that will come in and help with that. And we also have students that volunteer. Oh. Because the students at Algonquin can get credit um, for oh. their whole, yes. Because they've got that culinary program at Algonquin. Yes. So, so it's really good. I mean, we're bringing in a lot of different yep. uh, the high school students, the various companies to work and help and, and really aid the seniors. So it really is a nice way of doing it. So you started off by, by, by paying Vicki's salary, basically, when That's she was right. part-time. And then didn't she, then did she started, expand to full-time? Nope, she's never been full-time. She's full never been full-time. Although she works a lot of hours. <laughs> just, she looks, she seems full-time. She's there a long, a long time. She's very dedicated. And, and talk about volunteering. She's yeah. unbelievable about that. Yeah. She helps the friends when we have our um, you know, events, our fundraising events. She helps yeah. us a lot. And so. I think you mentioned that, that the program has become so successful that actually there's enough money now that it actually does pay her. It pays her. Yes, herself. that's correct. And so now what you guys are, the, the, what the friends are now doing is that you've, act, aren't you paying for it? Is, there's a need and in, in fact, it's in the works right now. There's yeah. a need to hire another person part-time yeah. to assist Vicki because it's really gotten huge. And you know, we want it to keep growing like that. So right. this person will, for the first year, and we're already way into the year, we. Yeah. We had, uh, you know, signed assigned a budget for that, and so that person will be paid for by us when she gets hired. I think it's in the works and it's going to be happening soon, and then we'll cover that until that can be oh, paid for on its own. Until it can be self-sufficient. Yeah, that's what a support that's, network. Yes, that's very important. Yeah, it really is right. a good support. Right, and it and it it seems like you know when 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 I was mentioning it, 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 it you are unique among these friends groups. I've seen very few friends groups that have not been an afterthought. 
that you basically you've got the Council on Aging and they will say, oh, well, we really need, really need a 501c3 so that we can get some contributions and so they'll create one and there'll be a board, but often it's the same folks as the, the folks on the Council on Aging and, and it's just an afterthought. And so a few dollars come in, a few thousand dollars, but nothing like what you're talking about in terms of the scale of what you're, what you're able to support, right? Well, we, we so, that have you're, so that you're able to, I, I'm sorry, but I guess so that you're able to experiment, in other words. You're able to kind of decide as a, in conjunction with the Council on Aging and the, and the Senior Center Director that there's something new you want to try. That's right. And you're able to try it, you know, to yes. kind of ramp it up. We at, vote. We vote on it. The friends vote on it because it's strictly us. We're the nonprofit mm -hmm. fundraising. Yeah. So we'll vote on it, but we definitely um, listen to the Council on Aging folks yeah. um, or, you know, Kelly and, and her folks to make sure that it's all going to work out well because we have had functions there. I would, if you don't mind, like to just say a couple of the functions That's I've just done. what I was going to... Okay. Right? <laughs> so, so obviously this, this, this machine, you know, needs to be oiled and, and so you've got to be doing something to, right, to be finding the money. Well, right? I think um, one of the things that even in, when I was in high school even, we would do a lot of different fundraising type of things. And I, I was It's tasked. great though, she, she, she's such a wallflower too. You know, you, it's surprising that she's really- <laughs> She's so introverted. She's so introverted that she's really interested in all these things. So, so go ahead. I like, well, I was tasked when I came on board with the president, existing president, because and then she, the next because one. Because she likes it, by the way. I do <laughs> love it. Yeah. Uh, of, of changing it up a little bit, having some different types of functions. Yeah. Because, and that's what I used to do, even at National Grid, have different types of activities so that people wouldn't have the same thing every year, even right. though they did fabulous things, like the Chocolate Spectacular was always so successful, and it really was wonderful, and they would hold that at Whitney Place. The Chocolate Assisted Spectacular. With, yes, and everything would be chocolate, and they'd have um, a silent auction or raffles, and, yeah. and it was really well received. Yeah. But the problem was it was happening in the winter, and sometimes, a few times, it got canceled or rescheduled. And so we decided that it would be good to have some things maybe in the spring or the fall. Yeah. Um, we have every year our country store fair, which brings in a lot of money for the Friends and the Senior Center. And that's always pretty much the same type of things, but everybody loves it and everybody can't wait for it. And it's the, the Saturday before Thanksgiving. It's the country so that's store a fair. And, so, and, so, and what, gets, what gets sold at the country store fair? Well, we have a grandmom's attic. Yeah. We have a raffle table um, that we raffle off some wonderful prizes that we recruit from the town and surrounding area. Yeah. And then we have a bake sale that ended up bringing in the most money last year. Wow. It was fabulous. And then we have the Council on Aging folks have a, a knitting. Um, uh, in fact, Adrian Cost is a head of this knitting group that does various crafts. Adrian Cost? Yeah, a a Adrian Cost is our Council on Aging chair. Mm -hmm. And she has been for several years. Yeah. And she actually was a Friends president way back and was very influential in at the whole building of the Senior Center, the new one. I see. And she's see. great. She, um, you know, she, she, it practically comes to every single one of our Friends meetings. And so getting back to this, I think that... Um, so you have the, the, fund, the, you have the event before Thanksgiving. Yeah, right? for that. For that. And every year we've done a few different things. Some really successful other events were, um, I had two fashion shows that I cheered, mm -hmm. and with the fashion shows, they were a high tea, and we actually got 125 plus teacups and saucers, and we had the three-tiered thing. And you know, some people were kind of skeptical, having it in the bistro at two o'clock in the afternoon After, on yeah. a Saturday, we ended up having a waiting list of like 25 people. Wow, So we that's did really fantastic. well with that. And we did that two years. Yeah. We had, um, a, last year we had a garden tour and teamed up with the garden club here in town. And even though it rained in the morning, everybody thought it went well. And our gardens that we targeted were people that cared for their own gardens, yeah. everyday type of living, and it really yeah. was very nice. And what t time of year did you do that? That when was last that? June. Last June. So we've had the fashion show, and the big one too was in Florida, in Naples, I saw a woman, Mary Lou Quinlan, who is an author and actress, and wrote The God Box. Mm -hmm. And it's a fabulous story about her relationship with her mother who had passed. And I brought that, I get goosebumps thinking about it. I brought it to the board and said, you know, we really should do this, we investigated. Mary Lou Quinlan donated her acting that, mm -hmm. for that event. We had it at Southgate and 
Shrewsbury, yeah. and it was fabulous, a sellout. And one of the things when we do a function there, mm -hmm. they have their people that live there, the residents come and they really enjoyed sure, it. And sure. she was just fabulous. Each person for the price of the ticket got a book signed by Mary Lou oh, that day. Wow. And we had a nice reception there. It really was a good event. And last year we did something called the radio show. So we're trying to do all of these things this year. Yeah. And Can this I year, talk about it? Yes. which is why you're on in July, by the way, because That's this right. is coming right up. This is going to be a tropical paradise evening on August 9th. And I just learned at my meeting this week, we can sell up to 65 tickets mm -hmm. because of the space. It's going to be at Whitney Place Assisted Living. Mm -hmm. And Jim Priest is on our board. He's the director of activities. They are fabulous to work with and it's a beautiful, beautiful facility. So we're going to have tropical drinks, appetizers, plentiful appetizers. Yeah. We're actually going to have hula dancers, <laughs> the best costume for Hawaiian shirts and so forth. Right. And the price is $25 a person, and Which you're is really very getting reasonable. a lot. Yep. You're really getting a lot with that. We also are going to have a ukulele player strumming through the whole thing, a signature drink, pina coladas, and sangria and wine and soft drinks, of course. So it's really a great event, and tickets are on sale now. At the senior center, and we are in the same. And everything that you just said is all included in That's that twenty-five all included, dollars. Included, yes. So it's really going to be a great event, and I really encourage folks to come. It's right downtown near St. Rosa Lima Church. And I think it's going to be a super event. And that's where it's going to be at St. Rosa Lima. No, it's, no, no, well, it's going to park at St. You can park at Rosa Lima. Rosa Lima. That's right, because Whitney Place is right next door. Right. Right, 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 right. So that I encourage folks to talk about. And you, if you have any questions, Call the senior center; they'll always get. You can just call. There isn't an email address that they can. No. No, they, just they should the, call senior the senior center, center when you're at the senior center. That's great. Um, the other thing that we'll do this year, um, we always have a booth at Apple Fest, and we always have a fun thing to do to encourage people to learn more about the Council on Aging, the senior center, and us. And so that's something that we've been getting a lot of activity at. And we're right at the street fair. That'll be on Saturday. What's an example of something you do at the booth? So I started bringing in first a spinning wheel. And the people would come in and spin the wheel. And there'd be a question. If they answer the question right about the senior center, oh, which the Council brilliant. on Aging ended up developing this questionnaire, then we would give them a prize. And sometimes the prize were like an ice cream cone that you could get in the bistro. So we get a certificate for that encouraging folks to come into the senior center. Were you like a marketing major right. in college? <laughs> I did do marketing yeah. with, a, um, yeah. with our it, energy efficiency work that we did. Right. Just, but just, the other just thing, curious. last year we got a cornhole and we had three holes in the cornhole that my brother made, yeah. painted it up and had the senior center, the Council on Aging, and the friends. And so they tried to get it in and if they did again, again they'd have questions and answers with the prize. So it brings people in all ages, and it really right. encourages people to learn about us. Right, right, and to realize that that all these people are really interconnected, and That's so you correct. really become the center of all kinds of different activity. That's right. So, so what? Are, when you think about it, you've been there for a long time now, right? And 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 so you obviously think about so you know kind of what else could it be, right? Because it is a lot. Yes. And it's come to be a lot. What else could it be? When you imagine the senior center as it continues to evolve, as you were mentioning, kind of the next year, the next three to right, five years. Right. What, what are you looking as how, a vision? How do you, for how do you, the what do you think? Center? What do you think about? Is, is well, and I can only give you the perspective of the friends. Of course, that's that's um, right. Well, we're going to have your counterparts on. Oh later, yes, right? and you'll be hearing Kelly. And, and and now we want to invite Ms. Cox. I think Adrian would be a right. great person yep. to talk with. She very knowledgeable and a lot of history. Yeah. And she, she would be able to really give you a lot of the insight for that. Yeah. Um, I know we're going to continue. We're, we're going to provide like two fundraisers a year. Yeah. We, I did write a letter for um, what's happening now with bringing in folks with that program, Daybreak. Yes. And so that was something that I have two sister-in-laws that have... Um, the beginning on stages of Alzheimer's. And, and so can you just talk about that a little bit? Can you talk about the Daybreak program a little bit? I know that we'll... I, we'll, I have we'll, to write a letter and we're gonna showing have some folks that um, yeah. the friends would support, whether we would hold a special um, fundraising event for yeah. it, or with the fact that we do budget ourselves and we 
earn a lot of money with that yeah. that we could probably help financially in some way that would have to be voted on but we all feel very strongly about this that it is a fabulous fabulous thing to be doing yeah, and I just just as oh, go ahead I was just gonna say it's it's wonderful to have seen it grown yes we started, it in, started Hudson. in Hudson I helped Janice we developed it we had support networks we had partners in the community and you know, it was such a new concept for, for this area. And that Tammy, it took can you just talk time. about it a little bit? Because because the interesting thing about Daybreak, it's well, it, it's it's kind of like stuff that that, that you do at right. at, at Pleasant Trees and also like the Memory Cafe stuff right. that you did. This this talk about what Daybreak is doing. Basically, we just have a good time with the folks that um, have cognitive impairment, memory impairment. So it's um, so it's folks that are that are coming to the to the senior center because they've got some memory issues. It could be that, yeah. or it could be caregivers who just need a little break. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it, it, my program pleasantries is a full day and all week, and yes. and that comes into play for a lot of people. But for the people that. Um, who may have financial constraints or uh, just want that minimal amount of time to go get their hair done or to go get what they need done. Three hours, a suggested donation, lunch, games, crafts, socialization. Yes, which that's is socialization. huge. That's Very the important. need in the community. Right, so. So, so a program that gives folks the opportunity to come to the senior center and, and, and be with other folks who may have some memory issues, and so that nobody is there feeling like they're sticking out, you know, like they're kind of embarrassed. Right. And 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 it's it and yeah, it started in Hudson, very slowly. I remember you know talking to you slow. and talking to the council and aging director there the first year. They get one person, three people, and now that's become like twenty. That's correct. And, and, and this, they, it's and, amazing to see because we had all band together to create the dementia friendly community and they, the three senior center directors were fabulous in saying we, we should do this, you know, the three of us. Right. So you have folks that attend all three and that's three days out of the that's five great. week. Yeah, so. and when you talk about folks becoming bonded at the hip, I think that's one of the interesting dimensions about these three communities, Marlboro, Hudson, Northboro now, is that you've got three senior center directors who just, who, who were really devoted to this particular mission of focusing on, on, on figuring out what a dementia-friendly community would look like, but in the course of doing that, also became really close friends. So they're really That's looking great. to That's do really programs nice. that kind of like, where, where, they can, where they can help each other. So the notion now of someone from Northboro being able to go to the Northboro Senior Center once a week, but also, at you know same time but different place. Go to the Hudson Senior mm -hmm. Center once a week. Go to the Marlboro Senior Center once a week. So you you, you have variety. You see a, n a number of different people. It, it's a wonderful thing, and it and, is. And, and, and could it could very well I, I would imagine foreshadow other programs like that that will evolve around here. So it's very exciting. That's and very you know exciting. the Northboro Senior Center. I think when people walk in, they feel like it's their living room, you know. And I think there's a comfort level there. So. I think that that part has really welcomed them too as part absolutely. of this because Marlboro is absolutely beautiful yeah. and Hudson is so warm and welcoming. It really is it's, so because that's good the point. threesome with yes. yeah, absolutely. Yes. to have a place to have three places where you can go and feel you're not at home but you're feeling at home. That's right. You know, it's just like a wonderful thing. So listen, thank you very, very oh, much for coming. Oh, this is my pleasure. This is really my exciting. Pleasure. Want to show up your ad one more time? Oh, yes. Add definitely. one more time, right? And you'll hear about others when you get to the Senior Center, too. Right, so you want to go. You want to go. It's a good deal. It sounds like the margaritas it's a are lot of right. Fun. It, sounds, it just sounds like all, all good. And you see people with grass skirts on. All, which could be very, <laughs> which might even be her, but we don't know that. <laughs> we, but we don't know and that. And we also want to plug and, and encourage folks who have not joined as a friend That's of right, the Senior join. Center. Join, it's just minimal. Join. It's, and right. do they get the well, newsletter This also? was um, one that I picked up to just show you. The Northboro Times goes to 1,000 plus people um, and we pay for the, sh the mailing of that. And so I think it really is good because I actually have a, a part in it that I write a friend's corner. Which is why everybody, everybody gets one because yeah, you're paying for the mailing. Right. The mailing, right. That's really exciting. And there are ads and all of that type of thing that's in really it, but exciting. it's really nice and it's very informative. I think Frank and Mary even have an ad in it. I think they do. <laughs> yes. They do. So it's yes. a, a good thing to, um, if you aren't getting it, let right. us know. Right. And, and they'll find you. <laughs> yes. So thank you very much for watching. Um, thanks very much, Anita. Thank you. And, my, my, and my wonderful co-host, <laughs> Tammy Pazaricki. And we'll see you next month 
on the next installment of Frank and Mary in Northborough. Thank you.